And outside of the now, we see very few folks really looking at kind of that future path. And for us, it's, it's really important um, because at some point you will need additional skill sets from your provider. Maybe not year one, maybe not year two, but somewhere down the road, you guys are going to look at the, the SOAR, the, the buzzword around uh, orchestration and automation, uh, parsing as pertains to new use cases or log sources or intelligence. And I'll throw this question right back to JD. Um, you know, JD, what would be some of the things you would care about as a practitioner getting into a contract with a service provider? You know, once you've got the SIM stood up, what, what would you expect from that provider? So it's all about evolving that that security practice that and that security posture right you know we, too often do we see people stand a sim up and they think their work is done um i would argue once you stand a sim up your your work really just starts you you now have the ability to see the things and aggregate them into one location now now you start you know looking at things like well how do we make our tools work together and that's when you know we go down uh, the SOAR road. I know, what does the API look like for, for these tools that we're leveraging? Can we, can we get them to function together to, to uh, maximize our efficiency and our workflow on a day-to-day -day basis, whether that's with a provider or without a provider? Um, you know, what, are the, what are our niche log sources that are specific to our business? Do we have, a, you know, do we have an e-store or a web application that's customer facing that uh, we can get some technology owners on the phone and and figure out, hey, what's what's normal behavior of this web application? Let's look at these database logs and what's a deviation from standard behavior behavior within this custom application? Let's figure out how to develop some use cases and write some custom alarm rules or dashboards around around that application and not just focus exclusively on you know, security logs or firewall logs or your or your standard AV logs, you know, your standard security stuff. You got to start evolving and thinking out of the box in order to really take your practice to that next level where you're actually putting to work the stuff that you've stood up. I like it. Thank you. This is a good one. Uh, we touched on it briefly around methodologies for investigations. Um, what we get from the customers right now, the prospects right now, they'll dig into SLAs around doing the investigations. And for the most part, I would say nine out of 10 of them, that's where the conversation stops. Where the customer, you know, at the end of the day, whatever that provider is doing, they're, they're gonna be judged on what they send back in their investigations. So why not spend some time digging into um, the methodologies, understanding what the expectation is from that provider back to you. Um, JD, can you talk over you know, methodologies? Why are they important um, as it pertains to investigations? Are they different from alarm type to alarm type? Absolutely. And, and yeah, they, they do differ from alarm type to alarm type. Um, so you should be asking the questions like, um, you know, who's in charge of, of, of building out your use cases or your rule package or, the, or your analysis methodologies? And the, the answer should be, you know, some form of senior team or some specialist group of individuals who have a lot of experience uh, you know, whether that's an incident response background or a threat intelligence or a threat research background, you know, who are able to dissect the most recent, most current, most often used tactics, techniques, and procedures and turn those into effective rules. You know, you're, you want to hear answers like, you know, we, we use a framework. We, we look at the, the, the MITRE ATT&CK framework and we develop use cases from that or we enable rules from that rule package. You know, you wanna hear things like, well, we're reviewing vulnerabilities every patch Tuesday and we're writing use cases and uh, assigning severities to, 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 to the vulnerab vulnerabilities that are released. And once we have sever severities and use cases, we're, we're writing rules around them. 
um, the investigation process and methodology. You want people who, you know, again, that same group of minds, the experienced um, incident responders, threat researchers that know how to answer, know where to look and know how to answer those who, what, why, where, and when questions that should be answered really with every analysis. You see so many providers who they, they just throw, a, throw an alarm back over the, the fence, right? You know, your IDS fires for an outbound communication to a potentially malicious site. So that alarm fires, your provider fields that alarm and says, hey, customer, I'm escalating this to you because your IDS fired and said you had a potentially outbound communication or an outbound communication to a potentially malicious site. Gee whiz, thanks provider. That's exactly what my IDS sent to you. All you did was throw that back over to me. Why don't I just modify the responder in my IDS to be myself because you provided me no value. You know, it should be every alarm that comes through, there should be an attempt to answer those questions. And that process is going to be built and how to come to those answers is gonna be built by the people who have experience answering those questions. Moving on, question six, offerings that really complement SIM. I, I know we touched a little bit on incident response, um, things that surround the SIM, uh, offerings that you would be, you know, potentially relying on. I know a threat and tell is, is always a big topic with our SIM customers at some point. I know it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a big space. It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And JD, in the context of SIM specific, what, what's the user experience, you know, with and without threat intelligence? Why would a customer want to know whether or not a provider has the capability of offering threat intel? Well, there's a couple of things I have to say about that. Uh, firstly, your SIM doesn't know what's evil. Um, your SIM is a, a, is a place to aggregate all of your security relevant logs and then write rules that look for behaviors across multiple of those aggregated log sources. Um, and that's how you alarm from a SIM. What Threat Intel empowers the SIM to do is to say, SIM, when you see any logs come into you that have you know, that are communicating or contain these pieces of data from known bad actors trigger an alarm. And that's essentially how you empower a, a, a SIM with threat intel. You know, you can write behavioral based rules in a SIM to look for if I see call outs this many times to uh, a, a website or an IP address followed by, uh, you know, large data transfers then that's an exfiltration rule. If I see uh, multiple authentication failures followed by uh, authentication success, you know those are all behavioral-based rule logics. What you're doing when you're importing a threat intel feed into the SIM is you're saying, these are known bad pieces of information. If you see communication with any of them, whether it's a, a domain, a URI, an IP address, or a, a file hash, you know, we know that these things are bad, please tell me about them. So you're just, you know, you're empowering the SIM with who the bad guys are. Um, now, once you bring threat intel into a SIM, it's really important and, and very many SIMs have the ability to enable open source feeds or, or vendor provided feeds uh, that, you know, don't cost any money. I would challenge, or if any of you, anybody has experience with doing that, you know, gauging that false positive ratio from subscription-based premium feeds to, uh, you know, your open source feeds, because that becomes a whole job in itself to dig through that volume of false positives. And in general, I'll say this to a, a service provider, you know, it, it kind of speaks to the maturity of that service provider uh, as a practice, if they're offering threat intel, if they have that research team, because that that's going to tell you not only are they going to give me the intel the intel that I need to empower my sim with who the evildoers are, 
they also have that team of people internally working to find out that information. And those people are also, you know, backing other parts of that, you know, analysis methodology or et cetera. You know, that team existing within your provider tells you something extra about that provider besides just that they have a threat intel feed. I like it. We already kind of touched on incident response. You know, those are good questions to ask. Uh, does the partner have that capability? And yeah, you know, let us know if you have questions or additional questions on that topic. Oh, eh, maybe this is a question. Uh, really still following up on that point. I don't think we had gotten to this one yet. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I, I like to read ahead. Um, but no, I think we've got this one. So questions on forensics capabilities, um, preparedness. You know, JD, what is, I know we touched a, a little bit, but Forensics capabilities, what's kind of bare minimum for you, right? When you're digging in, you're working with a partner, what, at a bare minimum, what questions should you be asking? What capabilities should they have? So it's, and this, this is important as well, and this also speaks to kind of what I touched on with the threat intel stuff. It says something about the maturity of a provider if they also offer these services in-house, right? Um, now, I'm, I'm, I may be slightly biased being that I work for a provider that also has IR services in-house, but I think I can confidently say, and other people from other providers would agree with me, when you have a provider who, who has you know intimate knowledge of your landscape, um, your threat landscape, your you know just your, your, your attack surface in general and how your, your network is built, it it speeds up that initial triage, that initial containment process. They already have an indication as to what your business critical services are, you know, what we need to make sure stays up. Uh, there, it's just a lot faster in terms of being able to engage a partner who already has knowledge about your, about your network that um, what, when, when evil strikes essentially. Um, having forensic capability